Hello, awesome algebra students. Welcome back. I have a big question for you, and it is this question right here. Can you graph any kind of equation? Right? That's that keyword, any equation here. So no matter if I give it to you in slope intercept, point slope, or standard, you got to be able to graph it. Okay, so I think that we are pretty good with the first two. We're going to make sure though, and then this video specifically, we're going to focus on standard form because that's that one that's the hardest to graph. So again, we're going to focus on standard form, but we're going to do the first two just to practice and make sure that we are good and we can answer that question with a definite yes, okay? So, like I said, we're going to get started with slope-intercept form. And remember, slope-intercept means that it has an M, and the intercept is B, so that must mean slope-intercept form is Y equals MX plus B, right? We can graph those. If we know what the M is and the B is, we begin with the B. I'm going to write this out. Begin with the B. Right, we make that point on the y-axis. So if this was my graph, I would begin with my b. Maybe it's right here, right on that y-axis, and then we move with the m. Right, begin with b, move with m. Well, m is the slope, so we're going to use the slope to move. Our slope tells us we're maybe rise and then run, rise and run rise and run. And then you go the opposite direction. You can continue to fill in that line with that same pattern and voila, you can graph equations in slope intercept form. Point slope form, let's make sure that we are good on that one too before we move on to that oh so hard standard form. Point slope. A point is an x1 comma y1 and a slope is an M, so with those two parts, that must mean point slope form is the one that looks like this, equals M, parentheses, X minus X1, because it has those point and the slope in that equation, right? And in point slope form, it's almost like slope intercept, but we are going to begin with the point, Right, that's the point that we take out of that equation. So if I took a point out of that equation, maybe that point was three, five. So I would go to three, five. And that is the point I'm starting with. It's not necessarily on the y axis. It would be the point that I pulled out of that equation. And then the second step is the same. You always move with the M, right? The slope tells you how much to rise to run. So you start from that beginning point and then rise and run, rise and run, rise and run. And you go the opposite direction, right? So it's almost like slope intercept, but you don't begin always on that y axis here. You begin at that beginning point that you pull out of that equation, okay? Here's the catcher, right? Here's the catcher standard form. Standard form is that one that looks like AX plus BY equals C. Now that's standard form. Remember back when we started finding slope from these equations? We had to do something to standard form in, the, in order to find the slope. Now same thing we got to do here. That process that we did was called solving for Y. And when we solve for y, remember that we went from standard form and we made it look like this. We changed it to be slope intercept, right? We solve for y. And then, guess what? If you have this format now, you just go back to these steps and you know how to graph. So you would solve for y, then once you have this format, you begin with b. Begin with the B. And then your other step, you would move with the M and you would be done. It is exactly like slope intercept form once you change it into slope intercept form. The only thing you gotta do with standard is solve for Y. So we're gonna make sure we are good on that process so that way we can answer 
this question at the end of the video with a definite yes, okay? Again, I'm gonna make sure that we have these two under our belt and that we are good, and then we're gonna make sure we can solve for Y, okay? So I'm gonna erase this, I'm gonna move us on to our first example. Here it is. And if I move my head right under this, it says, graph the equation okay it says graph this equation so when we are graphing it well if i could stop moving my head let's see if i can move it back the other direction nope had some technical difficulties there but i have moved my face back over there it says graph the equation if i look at this equation you should see that it is in y equals mx plus b format right so we know that this is the easiest one to graph right all we have to know is our beginning point so our b and our m which is our slope so we can move well our beginning point here our b is at negative five right that's a negative in there it was a plus and has a minus now so it's a negative five my m lines up perfectly it's three fourths so our two steps begin with b negative five so that means go to the y axis and go to negative five so we're going to go down below since we're going negative one two three four five and i'm going to put my beginning point right there on the y axis that is the y intercept right there then we're going to use our m to move and that m tells me how much i rise over how much i run and it is positive here, so we're doing positive, we're running to the right. Rise three, one, two, three, run four. One, two, three, four, and place your next dot. Alrighty then, do I stop there? I hope you said no, All right? I'm gonna continue to make some more points. I can keep going, rise three, run four to the right. And then I would be off the graph, so I'm not gonna do any more, but I can go the opposite direction. I can go down three to the left four, right? Those are all of my points and I would connect those with a perfect line straight through them. And there is our graph, right? This one was slope intercept. It's super easy to do. You can begin with a B, move with your M, okay? Let's make sure we have this next type of equation down and we got it before we move on to that last one standard form this one is point slope so y minus y1 equals m parentheses x minus x1 and the two things that we can take out of point slope is we can take out a point and we can take out a slope that's why it's called point slope right we can take out those two things let's take out a point we take out a point we're going to be very careful that we pick out the x1 and the y1 carefully i'm going to look for this x1 part this is where it is in my equation and we think to ourselves did they put in a positive or a negative there well since it still says minus they must have put in a positive five here because if they put in a negative five it would say minus negative and what they would have had to done is change it to a plus so they must have just put in a positive 5 because they didn't have to change that plus sign. Okay, so they put in a positive 5 for x1. So I got the y1 right here. Oh, that one they had to change to a positive, meaning that it said minus negative 4, so they had to put in that plus. So they must have put into this equation a negative 4 for y1. So we pull down that point. Can we pull out the slope easily? Where my m is, it is one half. So my slope is one half. That's all we need to graph it, right? We're going to begin at our point this time. Remember our point is not necessarily on our y-intercept here. This time we're starting with the point, right? So our point's not on the y-intercept, it's at five, negative four. So I'm gonna go to five, one, two, three, four, five, and then negative four is down, so I have to go down four. One, two, three, four. There is our point. That is where we have to begin now. Now we use our slope, which is our rise 
over our run. So we're gonna be rising one, running two to the right, it's positive. Rise one, two to the right, and I can't go any more that direction, so I'm gonna go the opposite way, down one, left two. Down one, left two. And you're gonna follow that pattern all the way till you can't go anymore. There we go. And connect them with that solid line. Straight through all of the points. There we go. So that is how we graft it from point slope. Okay, slope intercept, point slope, they're pretty similar, right? You take the pieces out, you use them to graft. Now let's do that standard form one, right? That's the fun one, okay? So I'm gonna erase this and move us right on into our first graphing from standard form, okay? So our process on this one is gonna be a little bit different. We can't just take the pieces out and then use those pieces to graph. We first need to manipulate the standard form equation by solving for y, okay? And we've done this process before. So if I take my standard form, and this is standard form, right? It looks like ax plus by equals c. I'm gonna rewrite that equation over here on the right-hand side the same way. Negative two x plus three y equals nine, okay? So we have that equation. Since we're gonna be moving things around, I like to draw the line at the equal sign, right? That way we can keep it organized and nice and neat. All of our work's gonna be neat so we don't get messed up. So we're gonna be going from standard form, and at the very end of this, we want our answer to look like y equals mx plus b. That's why we call it solving for y. You want to get y by itself on that left-hand side, okay? So I'm going to change color so you can see the math process that I'm doing. I'm gonna leave this three Y on this side, right? The Y needs to stay on this side, so I'm not gonna move that. I want to move this negative two X. I don't want it on this side, right? I want the X's over here. So when I move this negative two X, I need to cancel it out on this side. So to cancel it out, I think to myself, how do I cancel out a negative two X? Well, do just the opposite. You're gonna add two X. But what you do to that side, you have to do to the other. So I'm gonna add two X to this side as well, okay? So what happens is these zero out, you are only left with three Y equals. And then we see what happens over here. Now, since we're trying to match it up with this equation, I know that I want the X's first, right? M, X, and the B. So I'm gonna put two X, plus nine off there, right? It's looking closer to y equals mx plus b. The only thing I don't like is this three because I just want to get y by itself, right? I don't want that three with the y. That three with the y says three times y. So the only way I can get rid of it is to do the inverse. And the inverse of multiplication would be to divide by three divide by three. I'm doing that on both sides. So when we divide, let's see what happens. This three is zero out. The only thing you have left on this side would be y equals, and remember when we do division, we have to divide everything on this side. So you have to say two divided by three, nine divided by three. Okay, so two divided by three, hmm, if I type that into my calculator, it gives me a fraction or a decimal. So I'm just going to leave it as a fraction. Two divided by three. Keep the X with it. And then I have to take nine divided by three, which if I type that in my calculator, it gives me a good answer. It gives me positive three. Would you look at that? Doesn't that look exactly like y equals mx plus b? You got y by itself and now you have that? Perfect, because now we 100% know how to graph these guys, right? My m in that equation is two over three. My b in that equation is a three. You can take that information and graph it. The beginning, we always start at the y-intercept. So I go to positive three. And I make my point and I use my slope to rise and run, right? Rise two, run three. Positive, so I went to the right, rise two, run three. Rise two, run three. 
Perfect. You're going the other way, down two, to the left three. There we go. Down two, to the left three. Down two, to the left three. And then you connect those dots, just like normal, right? So standard form, we could not just take pieces out and graph it. We had to take standard form and change it to a different form in order to graph it, right? And that process that we did is called solving for y because you got y by itself at the end of that process. Okay, so we're gonna practice this. There's definitely a lot, a lot of a lot of math to this. So we're gonna make sure that we move on to our next example here and then practice, practice, practice. Okay. So this is standard form, we recognize that. I'm gonna write it off here to the side. 5x plus 3y equals 12. Okay, and we know that we're gonna be moving things around. I'm gonna draw that line at the equal so that way I can keep all of my work nice and neat because we don't like messy work, right? So there it is. I want to get y equals mx plus b at the end of this, right? I want to get y by itself. So I'm going to leave this y on this side for now, right? Because I want the y there. I want to get rid of the 5x. So it's a positive 5x. How do you zero out a positive 5x? We do the inverse, the opposite. We're gonna subtract 5x on both sides, right? That's the key, golden rule, both sides to zero it out. Leaves me with positive 3y equals, and on this side, we can go ahead and line it up how we have mx and the b. My mx would be negative 5x and then a positive 12. We lined it up. We almost have y by itself. That's what we're aiming for here. But I have that three with it. Remember, three times y is what that says. So the inverse of timesing would be to divide by that number. So we're going to divide by three on both sides to zero out the threes here and leave me with y equals, and we're going to divide both things on that right side. You have to divide both. Negative 5 divided by 3 gives me a fraction. So that's how I leave it. Negative 5 over 3 x 12 divided by 3 hmm, gives me a good answer. 4. Look at that. It matches up. Y equals m x plus my b. You have all the parts to it. Now you can go ahead and graph it. Right, I'm going to take my pieces that I want. My m is negative 5 over 3. My b is 4. We can graph it. You begin at your b, so we're going to begin at positive 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. Positive 4. And you're going to use your slope to move. Okay, it's a negative here. So remember, that means that we want to run to the left to create that negative slope. We're going to rise 5. One, two, three, four, five. But we're gonna run to the left to create that negative slope. One, two, three. Look at that. If I go the opposite direction, one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three. And then I keep going. I probably could fit one more point. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three. I don't think I can fit anymore. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three. You look way off the chart, maybe just a little bit right there. Okay, and it definitely creates that negative slope. And right? if I connect these points, that is definitely a negative slope. It did that because you ran to the left. So there's my negative slope. Guys, you graphed another standard form. You had to solve for y, then use this information to graph it. Okay. You can't get around that process solving for why we got to do each step of it. I have one last example just to make sure that we are solid on this skill and that we can answer that question at the end of this PowerPoint. So here is our last one to do together here. Our last one reads negative x plus 3y equals 6. I'm going to draw the line at the equal sign to keep our work nice and neat. And we're going to do the process of solving for y. We want to get y by itself at the end of this. 
because I can't graph this standard form, right? We got to solve for y. So the first thing we're going to do is leave y alone. Y can stay on that side. The only thing we want to get rid of first is this negative x. Let's think about this. What's that imaginary number? It's not really imaginary, but what is that placeholder number that I could put in right here? One, right? That is really reading negative one x. There's one x there. So just like that, the opposite of negative one x would be positive one x on both sides. Positive one x. To cancel it out and leave you with three y equals, I'm going to line it up, I have positive 1x, positive 6. My last step is to get rid of that 3. Again, I have to divide on both sides by that number to zero it out to leave me with y equals, divide everything on this right side, 1 divided by 3, I'm going to leave it as a fraction, 1 over 3x, 6 divided by 3 gives me a good number, is two. Okay, you now have y equals mx plus b, and you know how to graph those because we've been doing those all along since the very beginning. My m is one over three. My b is two. We're going to begin with b, so I'm going to begin on that y axis with my b at positive two, one, two make my y-intercept point, and then we're going to move with our m. Remember, our m is rise over run. It's a positive, so we run to the right. Rise 1, 3 to the right. Rise 1, 3 to the right. Rise 1, 3 to the right. And I would run off, so I'm going to extend it the other direction. Down 1, 3 to the left. Down 1, 3 to the left. Down 1, 3 to the left. There we go, connect them with that beautiful straight line. And there we have it. We have graphed our last standard form equation together. Okay, now let me ask you that question one last time. Can you graph any type of equation? There's that keyword again, any type of equation. My hope is that you can answer this with a big old capital yes, right? Slope intercept form, can you graph equations that is mx plus b. Yes, you graph those by taking the m, taking the b, and starting the b, right? Begin with the b, move with your m. Can you graph point slope form that looks like this? Equals m parentheses x minus x1. My hope is that you can answer that with a yes. You can graph point slope form by pulling out that point right, being careful with the x1 and the y1 if it's negative, positive, pulling out the slope and using those two things to graph it. The last question is can you graph an equation in standard form that looks like this? My hope is that you can answer that with a yes, right? We have a process there. You have to solve for y to get y equals mx plus b. And then once you solve for y, it's so easy from that. All you need to know is your m and your b. You begin with the b, you move with your m, and that's how we graph it, right? So I hope, guys, that you are becoming more and more confident in your graphing skills and that you are able to answer yes to all three of those questions. If not, be sure to reach out for some help. We are here to help you, and we are so excited that you are learning with us and that we are here to help you. Bye, guys. Have a great rest of your day.